The plant pictured here is a species of Kalanchoe, commonly known as Kalanchoe or mother of thousands, sometimes mother of millions. This genus has two main types, Kalanchoe and Bryophyllum, which is considered a subgenus. The main differences between the two groups are the flower structure and the fact that most bryophyllums have the ability to form plantlets on the leaf margins, like the species in this image. We'll start with some plants in the main Kalanchoe group. Most that are commonly grown as house plants or in containers are upright perennials, like Kalanchoe blossfeldiana, also known as the florist's Kalanchoe. This is the one that many of you are probably familiar with and is commonly sold at grocery stores or in big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot. Kalanchoe blossfeldiana has simple, opposite to sub-opposite leaves that are ovate and glabrous and have a crenate, or scalloped, margin. Kalanchoe blossfeldiana is popular because of its large umbels of flowers, which are in the carotenoid pigments. They're going to be typically yellow, orange, red, pink, or white. The individual flowers are salverform and have four petals. And there are double flowered cultivars as well, which are quite attractive. Kalanchoe pumila is another species in the main Kalanchoe group and it has a similar leaf shape and flower structure, although the flowers will have longer, recurved petals, and the leaves are a purple grayish green with a white waxy coating. Inflorescences like this, composed of four petaled flowers and pretty upright in form, will be typical for the main Kalanchoe group. This is Kalanchoe tomentosa, also known as the panda plant, which is another popular species. This species has elliptic, tomentose, which means fuzzy, leaves with blunt, small teeth that kind of have a brown coloration on the margins of those teeth. And those teeth and the coloration is on the top third of the leaf. The leaves are thicker than florists Kalanchoe and Kalanchoe pumila, and they're slightly concave on the surface, which you can see if you look to the bottom left of this photo. Kalanchoe tersiflora grows in a basal rosette of paddle-shaped, powdery, gray-green leaves with entire margins and a retuse leaf apex. Retuse means that there is a small notch at the apex. And this species is monocarpic, so the rosette will die after flowering. And even though the leaves are typically grayish green, if they're grown in bright sun, like many of the succulents in this unit, they will take on a nice pinkish to red color. Now we'll get into the bryophyllum group. What the genus Kalanchoe is famous for, and where it gets the common name Mother of Thousands, is the fact that many species in this group are viviparous, meaning they can grow new plantlets on the margins of the leaves. A lot of times the plantlets will fall off the leaf when they're small, but here you can see what happens when the plantlets grow out a little bit. It's interesting to note how one of the plantlets is green and the others are kind of a pinkish white. This is because the plantlets will take on the characteristics of the region of the leaf from which they regenerate. Here is another viviparous species in the bryophyllum group, Kalanchoe gastona sponieri, also co called the donkey ear plant. And this species will form plantlets on the tips of the leaves. The flowers of bryophyllum type Kalanchoes will have inflorescences composed of tubular flowers. They still consist of four petals, but they will be united in a long corolla tube. 
And here you can see the corolla tube of Kalanchoe pinnata is enclosed by a long tubular calyx, giving it kind of a pretty um, bell-like appearance. On the whole, Kalanchoe are very easy to grow and are great for beginners. They need full sun to bright direct light for best growth, flowering, and coloration, and they prefer an organically rich but well-drained soil and a regular watering schedule during the growing season. Many will even do well outdoors in areas with mild climates and a lot of sun. Kalanchoe species are dormant in the summer in their native environment, but they can be forced to bloom whenever by reducing watering and providing 14 hours of darkness and 10 hours of bright light every day for six weeks before the desired bloom time. As soon as flower buds develop, increase the light during the day and resume watering. After flowering, remove the spent blooms to encourage new growth. Kalanchoe is listed as toxic to pets by the ASPCA. And this concludes our discussion of Kalanchoe, also known as Kalanchoe or Mother of Thousands.